caucus in the House says, and I quote, do we want to win, do we want to govern, or do we want to be internet celebrities? Uh, what do you make of that dig at Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez? And why can't you be all of the above? Well, you certainly can, and I don't understand how you win without having internet mobilization. I mean, last time I was on, we discussed Facebook and its extraordinary power. Well, it turns out that if you look at the top yes. 10 sites on Facebook today, nine out of 10 of them are conservative sites. Occupy Democrats is the only uh, Democratic site. They worked with Biden to help him win. Why we wouldn't want to be able to compete on those platforms uh, is inexplicable. Of course, we want to win there if we want to win elections. Uh, of course, it seems inexplicable, but then it's your, it's your House Democratic Caucus Chair who's saying it. Um, you maybe want to have a chat with him. Uh, I talked on this show a couple of nights ago about the so-called moderates attack uh, on the squad and the Democratic Party left. Uh, do you think there was any accuracy in the claim that defund the police and socialism and socialized medicine cost Democrat seats in the House, especially in places like California, where it looks like you're about to lose uh, two more Democratic held seats in the coming days? No, and here's the proof. Joe Biden flipped Arizona. Joe Biden flipped Georgia. Uh, I have said, and uh, I know you believe this, uh, that the turnout in Philadelphia, in Milwaukee, in Detroit, in Atlanta, is what helped us win the presidency. Now, I don't understand how, as politicians, uh, you're going to script uh, and give talking points to activists. They are going to have their language. The task of a political leader is to inspire the activist base, but to express things uh, in your own views. I talk about budgeting our values. So I say, yes, we need to fund uh, law enforcement, but we have to hold them accountable and also fund mental health services and, uh, and education and have the proper balance. Different political leaders can uh, frame it in the way they see, but don't blame the activists. Don't blame Black Lives Matter. We've just got you record turnout. Uh, it's such a good point there that you make, because, of course, the reality is that defund the police is both a deeply unpopular slogan, according to the polls and all the caveats we have about polls these days, uh, but as a policy in terms of diverting money to mental health and social services, it's actually quite appealing across the political spectrum. So is this a messaging problem or is the whole thing just overblown to begin with? I think it's overblown. Let's just look at a historical example. I, and uh, everyone likes to cite Lincoln. Imagine if Lincoln were president and he kept whining and he said, you know, the abolitionist rhetoric is too intemperate and it's extreme. And instead, he said, no, I'm going to give brilliant speeches that are going to stitch the country back together. So instead of casting the blame on activist movements who have not signed up to win elections, who aren't doing public polling, who are speaking the language uh, that is motivating them, why not focus on what you're doing to communicate uh, your values in a way that's going to build consensus? Don't blame the movements. So uh, I'm not being facetious, Congressman, but when you ask these questions, uh, they're great questions. I'm just wondering, are you going to ask them of your colleagues, the Hakeem Jeffries and Abigail Spanbergers and James Clyburns, who are the ones launching these attacks? Or is this just going to carry on festering for months and years to come? Or is there going to be a reckoning? Are you all going to get together and hash it out? I think we're going to uh, get together and, uh, and be able to come to a common uh, agenda. I mean, we have to do that if we want to earn the trust of the American people. They've uh, given us the House, they've given us the White House. Uh, now it's time to deliver. Look, $15 minimum wage. People say, oh, that's a progressive policy. Florida voted for a $15 minimum wage. One yeah. of the reasons the attack on socialism uh, was effective is we didn't have a counter economic message. Uh, but those of us who supported Bernie said they're going to call anyone a socialist. Uh, but what was our message in, in that void? Our me we didn't have a clear message that we're going to give $15 minimum wage. We're going to create good jobs. We're going to provide child care. We're going to get rid of the student loan debt. And in the absence of having a hard-hitting economic message, those labels stick more. And I, I think so the lesson to me is we need a stronger, clearer economic message. I mean, those labels stick more, and obviously the two Democrats in South Florida who lost their seats were actually on the kind of center, moderate, whatever you want to call the right side of the Democratic Party political spectrum. They were not on the left, yet they were dubbed socialists and lost their seats. Um, as you say, in the same state, the minimum wage policy passed with huge support, including presumably from Republicans. But then you say, you know, the label issue I'm intrigued by, because if you, of course... I'm not a socialist yourself, I don't think you call yourself a socialist, but then you were co-campaign chair 
for a candidate who proudly calls himself a socialist, Bernie Sanders, who might have been on the ticket had things gone differently. And would likely have won, uh, in my view, with, with turnout. And I call myself a progressive capitalist because I believe Bernie's policies of investing in health care and investing in education are the basic building blocks to economic growth, and especially in a human capital-oriented 21st century economy. But here's the thing. I think we don't stand up for our values. Let's talk about Florida. Let's talk about the label of socialism. And let's talk about Venezuela. What do the Democrats say? We say, oh, some of, some of the people say, well, uh, we're for Guaido too. And so then it looks like we're just mealy mouth. Why not get up there and say, you know what? Uh, the interventions in Venezuela have actually made the situation worse. They're actually strengthening Madero. These intervention wars are wrong. And what we're standing up for is a difference of foreign policy. And if you're actually for ending endless wars, you shouldn't be for intervention in Venezuela. This has nothing to do with labels of socialism. But because you don't hear us stand clearly, make our case, uh, we get caught up where people say, well, the policies are the same and they're being labeled socialists. No, we have to hit back. We have to stand for our, our values and make the case and then let the public decide.